we're starting a brand new series tonight. A brand new series tonight. Everybody say emotions. Anybody else cringe when you hear that word? Emotions. Emotions. If you're a lady in the room, maybe, maybe you've been told that you're too emotional. If you're, if you're one of the dudes in the room, maybe you've been told that you're not allowed to have emotions. If you're Puerto Rican in the room, you're all screwed up. <laughs> we, 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 we don't know what to do. Uh, emotions. Let me ask this. Who would say that they, uh, they are emotional? You're emotional. Now, if you're sitting next to somebody and you know they're emotional, their hand isn't raised, go ahead and elbow them really, really good. Who's emotional? Oh, dang, that's tough. Who is emotional? Okay. I would say, I would say that I, uh, I'm emotional. I, when I was a teenager, woo, I was emotional. I'd cry when I was happy. I'd cry when I was sad. I'd cry when I'd get angry. I'd cry when I'd get worried. I cried when I got married. I cried all the time. I'm just, I'm just that, that's just my way of just, ah. Like I just, it just, that's just how my emotions come out. Anybody else, you're, you're emotional. You kind of wear your heart on your sleeves. People can tell when you're happy. They can tell when you're mad. Tell when you're sad. I, I, I feel that. But there's a difference. There's a difference between having emotions and being emotional. All of us might not be emotional. Like I, I think of one of my close friends, Josiah. Josiah is one of the most even-killed guys. You you won't know if he's having a great day. You won't know if he's having a bad day because he's just Mr. Consistent. Meanwhile, me, I'm like a new roller coaster at Universal. I'm going to take you on all the twists and turns. We have, he balances me out. Oh, so not all of us are emotional, but no matter how extra we are or how consistent we are, all of us have emotions. Everybody say emotions. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you believe that there is such thing as good emotions and bad emotions? Okay? Okay? Here's, here's what I want to present to you tonight. When you and I say that there's good emotions and bad emotions, and then we feel one of those bad emotions, we think that we're bad. When we're actually feeling something that God gave us. So you're bad for feeling something that you can't control. You ever felt angry about somebody doing wrong? You saw racism and it made you mad? You saw some injustice on social media and it made you mad? You saw what people were speaking and it just made you mad? Yeah, that, that's not wrong. Have, have, have you ever felt happy? You ever felt happy? Um, maybe, maybe she actually said yes to going on a date with you. Ah, you've been asking for six years. Good job. Oh, she actually followed you back. You actually got that job, that summer job that you were wanting so you could go to the blend night shift lock in. You see how I did that? Connected it. Thank you. You'll get it later. We, we all experience emotions differently, but every single one of us have emotions. Here, here's something that I've come to realize. Emotions give the world color. Now, I know there's, there's an aesthetic now with everything being black and white, but they have this picture. I want you to put this up. It's a beautiful picture. It's a very blurry picture. It's a beautiful picture, though. Um, you, you can tell that it's like what? Like, like the water, the beach maybe, some rocks, and it looks like some trees. You, you can't really tell. Uh, that would be life without emotions, it's bland. You, you, can, you can state facts about it, but you can't feel anything that's in it. There, there, it needs to have more life in it. So then whenever you put color to the same exact picture, you're able to see more depth. You're able to see a sunset or a sunrise. Anybody like sunsets, sunrises? Yeah, they're beautiful. You're able to see a sunset, a sunrise. You're able to see the crashing white uh, rushes of the waves, but then the blue sea and the different tones of the rocks and the, and the trees. You have eyes. You can see it too. We're, we're able to see so much more when we do things with color. We're able to actually feel it. And a world without emotion is like a world without color. And whenever I try to live my life without emotions, it's as if I'm trying to live my life without the color that God gave it. 
See, I would say that there's no such thing as good emotions and bad emotions. Here's what is good or bad, how we handle our emotions. A car is a beautiful thing. It's also one of the easiest ways to get killed. Right? Right? Uh, ladies know this very, very well. A straight iron or a curling iron can, be very, can make your hair very, very beautiful. It can also be the thing that help burns your neck, burns your ear. Uh, you, you ever got some shoes that, man, you just knew that them were the best looking shoes, but they was the wrong size? But you kept them anyway because you thought that they looked too nice. And what if I can't get my size? So now you walk in and your dog's just sitting in the shoes like that. And you over here hurt, right? No, when, when I live my life with color, I'm, I'm not enduring. I have, I have to learn how to navigate my emotions. Those shoes aren't bad. They maybe just weren't the right size for me. And emotions, those aren't bad. We just have to know how to handle. What do we do with our emotions? See, do you know why you have emotions? Very, very simple. God gave them to you. God said whenever he was creating man, actually this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, the Bible says this. So God created human beings in his image. Let's say that again. So God created human beings in his image. In the image of God, he created them, and he created them male and female both genders. Uh, he created them male and female. God said, I have an opinion about what you should look like. I have an opinion about how you should feel. I have an opinion about what I want humanity to be, and I actually want it to replicate me. I actually want you to have the things that I have. Have you ever wondered, like when the Bible says that, that in the New Testament, the Bible says that Jesus was 100% human. That means he dealt with his emotions the same way you do. And so if God is to say, okay, well, I want man to be made in my image, that must mean that God has emotions himself. So again, emotions, they're, they're not the bad thing. And here's what I've learned. Our feelings can help us connect with God or make us feel far away from God. My emotions, what I do with them can either be the thing that helped me set up to be closer to Jesus or my emotions, my feelings can be the thing that make me feel like I'm even further away from him. God gave us something that he has. And in 1 John chapter 4, the Bible talks about how God is love. He doesn't know what love is. He actually defines it. That when you say God, you are also saying perfect love. In Psalm 103, the Bible says that God has compassion. It's the emotion of compassion, feeling things for people. He has anger expressed in Exodus chapter 33. He has grief expressed in Ephesians chapter 4. And in Zephaniah chapter 3, the Bible says that God has the emotion of joy. All these emotions that we talk about, God has, yet they're bad for us and they're good for him. Or some of them are okay, but, but others, they're, they're not. He gave you something that he has and that Jesus has. So if emotions are good enough for God and for Jesus, then why are they not good enough for you and I? I talked to us earlier, or I said earlier, talking about the, this mystery bus ride. Right, that, that we were getting into. I was preparing this message last night, had in my head where I wanted to go, and I was like, man, I, I feel good about this message. I felt like it was going to connect. And then today happened. And I feel like I have felt every emotion known to mankind, and I think I made some new ones. I, th I think I made some new ones. When I got word that what I expressed to you last week, I had to now take it back. I felt angry. I'm going to think I'm a liar. Now I felt guilty and I felt shameful. Are they going to be able to trust me anymore? I said this and now I'm having to take it back. I felt let down because people gave us their word and now we're dropping an event that we had already publicized because they didn't hold up their end. I felt all these emotions, but then I also felt good because I was like, well, 
I had a hard time this weekend trying to get things up. We had a hard time getting things ready today. So I guess God might be trying to save us from something else that could potentially happen. So I felt kind of good at that point. And then I realized, oh, we could have four times, five times the amount of students doing a lock-in here than what we could take on a mystery bus ride. I felt really joyful because I kind of like y'all. Y'all cool. Felt all these emotions. Have you ever felt whiplash before with your emotions? I'm on this high, I'm on this high, I'm on this high, and then I got that news. And th th there, there was no descent. I just got dropped. Or I've, I was feeling so low because of something that happened, and then I got news that was really, really exciting. But I, I almost feel numb, like I'm happy, but like I, I don't even know how to express it. I can't even... I can't even enjoy it. Again, emotions, they're, they're not this bad thing. There's this thing that is a part of our life, no matter how much you and I try to push them down, to push them away, to not open them up to people, you and I have emotions. And to push back on something that God gave us is to say, hey, God, you messed up when you gave me this. And the Bible actually says that he took the time to get to know us that we are a perfect, unique design of his creativity. He knew exactly what he was going to do. And so then I asked the question to myself, how can my emotions bring me closer to God? They brought me close to jail. I'm being serious. My emotions, my, my, my anger <laughs> has gotten the best of me. I'm a very passionate guy in everything that I do. When I love, I love hard. When I laugh, I laugh really, really loud. Maybe you've heard me. Uh, wh when I'm angry, I see red. And so I'm like, I, I've had emotions where they haven't pushed me close to God. Man, they pushed me close to jail. Uh, they, they pushed me close to getting kicked out of schools. They, they, they pushed me away from people and they pushed me away from friends. So how can emotions, the good and the bad, the ones that have a positive view and the ones that have a negative view culturally, how can those push me closer to God? Here's what I would say. They allow you and I to have an authentic relationship with God. Think about your best friend. Maybe they're in the room, maybe they're not. But as you, as you and your best friend are doing life together, uh, I, I want you to think about what's the difference between you and or them and the other friends that you have? What's the difference between that friend and other friends? Is it just the amount of time that you hang out together? Or, or is it just because you have classes together? Uh, is it just because you play sports together? What is it that makes that person your best friend? Chances are you were able to be vulnerable with them. You were able to show them some of your emotions and they didn't stab you in the back with it. They didn't go run and tell everybody all your dirt. They held it in close. They protected it like a jewel, like a diamond, like a prized possession. So the people that you are the most authentic version of yourself with are the people who you've allowed yourself to express emotion to. You ever cried in one of your friend's arms? You ever celebrate with somebody? You ever gone to somebody when, when you were feeling anxious or when, when life was getting really hard and you just went to that person and maybe you were not being emotional and you, and you weren't crying and you weren't being demonstrative, but you were able to have a conversation and that was you expressing your emotion and, and they didn't just drop you? They didn't go post on Snapchat, yo, y'all don't want to be friends with this person, this person, funky. They held it close. It's, it's a real relationship. It's an authentic relationship. Authenticity takes trust. I have to trust you. If you want me to express my emotions to you, I got to trust you. If you want me to express the vulnerable parts of me, not the filter parts, but the raw and real, I have to trust you in order for me to do that. God, the Bible says, is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And so I have this challenge that, as I was writing this and, and prepping this, it kind of it challenged me. 
Why is it then that I trust other humans with my emotions more than I trust the person who gave me all of my emotions? What is it that has made me feel like the only time I can go to God is whenever I'm happy? Whenever I want to jump? Like, what? Well, why do I feel like that's the only time that I can do it? No, God, God can handle me crying, and God can handle me upset, and God can handle me angry, and he can handle me being frustrated, and he can handle my anxiety whenever I feel overwhelmed. He can handle my grief whenever I've experienced loss. He's not just a God that wants to celebrate and throw a party. No, he's a God that wants to cry with you. He says, wherever you are, I want to meet you, but I just need you to trust me. You ever have somebody force their way in a relationship with you? Um, if you're anything like me, when they do that, after you throw a jab and back up a little bit, no, I'm joking. Uh, it, it, anytime somebody's forced their way in in a relationship with me, my immediate reaction is to close off and back up. Like, I don't want you to get around me. I don't know what you're here for. I don't know if you're going to try to abuse the information that I tell you. If you're going to try to go and spread around rumors, you got an alternate, alternative agenda. I don't know what this is. So I'm going to close this thing off. That's why the Bible says that God is a gentleman and he doesn't force his way into anything because he wants there to be trust. You don't have to force trust. You give trust. God says, I want you to just give me trust. Give me those emotional, those vulnerable parts of you. I'm not saying you have to bawl your eyes out because that's not a, Pastor Liz did not cry at our wedding. I ugly cried at our wedding. Snot, grabbed my tie, blew my nose, put it back in. I, I was a mess at my wedding, but that, that wasn't Pastor Liz. So it's not that we have to be over the top with our expression, but we all have the ability to trust somebody with those vulnerable parts with us, of us, of our emotions, and bring them into those kind of conversations. Psalm chapter 62, verse 8, the Bible says this, yes, my friends, you should always trust in God, and then what? Tell him about all the troubles in your thoughts. God is our safe place to hide. One translation of the Bible says, tell him all of your emotions. Express to him your feelings. God can handle all that. It doesn't give him the ick. It doesn't make him push back and push away. It doesn't freak him out. It doesn't say, what did I just get into? No, if anything, it's, man, thank you so much for trusting me in that way and allowing me to be there in support of you. Everybody stand to your feet. God can handle every one of your emotions. And so here's what I want to challenge you with tonight. Don't have a surface relationship level, a surface level relationship with God. Don't have a surface level relationship with God. Don't just have a relationship where, hey, I'm down to come on a Wednesday night, and as long as it's a group setting, I'm good. But as soon as it starts to get vulnerable and you actually want to talk to me, God, checking out. Peace. I, I don't want that because I don't even, here, here, here's the problem what happens. Because we don't like our emotions sometimes, we think that other people won't like our emotions either. And so to protect ourselves, we push back from people, which ends up hurting ourselves even more. I had a conversation with a student a couple weeks ago. They were expressing their heart about some things that had happened, and, 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 I, and I hate what has been going on with this student, and and the position that they felt in, that they felt put in, and the student got emotional, and, and, and they opened up, they were, they were being very vulnerable, and then by the end of it, they said, I already feel better because I found a safe place to express my emotions. If they felt that with another human being, how much more could you feel that with God? Somebody who's never told a lie, who's never started a rumor, whose intentions are always great, who always follows through, who is a firm foundation. That's what God wants to do, but again, he can't, can't force his way in. Don't have a surface level relationship with him. Have an authentic one by expressing your emotions and your feelings to him. He can't force you to open up, but he 100% does welcome the real you. That's why the Bible says that God actually, stand, Jesus stands at the door of our heart knocking. Not in our mind, 
Not in our hands to make sure that we do, I want you to work the right thing. Not in our feet to make sure you just go the right places. Not in our head to make sure that we know all the right facts. But no, he stands at our heart. Why? Because that's the control center of my mind, my will, my emotions. It is all right here. And so when he knocks at that door, he says, I want that vulnerable spot that you don't let everybody into. That's the part of you that I want, that tender area, because I'll treat it better than anybody else ever has. Can we pray tonight? And here, here's the two things that I want us to pray for. Number one, I want us to thank God for the emotions that we have. For some of us, we need to rethink what it means to have emotions. Again, as I said, there might be people in this room, I fall under this category, that they've said that you're way too emotional. Really? I think you're human. And I think we can all do better at how we express our emotion, for sure. And we're going to get into that later in this series. But the first thing, we have to know where does our emotion come from? It doesn't come from our parents. It comes from God. How I handle my emotions, we'll, we'll get into that. So number one, I'm going to thank God for the emotion that he's given us because it has brought things to color in our life. It's not just so bland. My emotions help me relate with you. If you ever, uh, you ever watch a commercial about the dog, SP, uh, uh, SPCA, like the, the, the dog shelters, you know what I'm talking about? I probably said it wrong, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like they, they show dogs are, okay, you see, a, you see a commercial about orphans in a different country, and they always look sad. You know why they do that? Because they know that you and I are emotional beings. And if I, connect, if I can connect somebody with their emotion, then other things will follow. God says, I, I want to know you intimately, emotionally, in those vulnerable ways. So number one, we're going to thank God for our emotions. And then number two, we're going to ask God to help us use our emotions to have an authentic relationship with him. Not emotions that push us from him, but emotions that actually help this relationship be so much more real than me just reading pages of a book or me just jumping up and down while I sing a song. No, it's somebody that I can relate with. God, we love you so much. Man, we're so grateful for these crazy things of emotions that you've given us. And God, man, we don't fully understand them. We don't comprehend them. And we don't always do uh, uh, show and express our emotions the best way, but you're the one that gave them to us. And so we want to say thank you for helping us add color to our life, for helping us have ways that we're able to engage and interact with each other, where we're able to feel things with each other because of our emotions. And God, our prayer tonight is that you would help us see, change our mind as to what emotions are, that they're not things that push us further away from you, but they're actually things that can help us have an even more authentic relationship with you. God, I pray that you help us this next, this upcoming week for these next seven days. God, I pray that you help us and challenge us when we feel different emotions start coming in. I pray that you challenge us to where we think, how is this helping me closer to God? How does this help me be closer to God? How does this one help me be closer to God? No matter the emotion, whether I categorize it as good or bad. It's something that you gave me, which means it's something that you can use. So God, I pray that you help all of us in this room. Get, help us get rid of the shame of our emotions and allow us to see the beauty in what you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.